So welcome back to Room 101. And as the summer disappears into the barrage of thunder and lightning, Celtic look to welcome Hearts back to Celtic Park this Sunday afternoon. So I'm absolutely delighted to welcome back Nicky Walker to the show to help me have a look at our Edinburgh rivals. Well, Nicky, how are you, pal? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you, Scott? I'm doing okay, thanks. As as always, I'm under a wee bit delicate, but I'll, <laughs> I'll push through, kid, I'll push through. So most won't know this, but myself and Nicky in January sat down and we done a show to talk about the upcoming game, but some tip never press record. So <laughs> last time I spoke to you was the opening day of last season, as you yeah. guys came up with championships. Um, so, so it's, it, that's a good segue for us. We'll, we'll start right at that. Well, in fact, we'll kick off just before that, right? So, hey. Hearts rejoined the Scottish top division after a season hiatus in the Championship, returning as champions of that division. Robbie Nielsen, who had returned for that season, it's fair to say he hadn't even had the easiest ride at that point. I think there was still kind of some murmurs. I don't know if you kind of want to talk about that, your own perspective. I mean, he got you at the championship, but everybody was not overly sold on him, was it? Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, <clears throat> I think the, the the most important thing was getting out of the championship, and to be fair to me, did that. But I think the performances in the cups were really poor that first season. He came back, and uh, obviously we went out very early. Quite a shocking result up north. Um, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, Brora, I think it was. Um, so it was it was it was pretty poor. Um, so a, a lot of people weren't happy with them and to be honest I wouldn't say I was in that camp because he's always done what's been asked of him first and foremost when he's when he's been with us and um, last season I know we'll probably we'll get into that last season in a minute but um, I think he I think he did improve again um, and it shows with the fact that he's just had a new deal I think yeah. him and his backroom staff have just got a new deal so um, yeah, there was a few murmurs that kind of didn't let maybe like the style of football he was playing, but yeah, I also yeah. think he didn't quite have the players he wanted as well. And I think that's slowly changing as well as yeah, that, that on the pitch. So de- definite, definite. When we were asserts this time, and it's I've said this ad nauseum on these shows. It was very interesting when you going through Scottish football teams and the turnover of players. Mm. Loads and loads of teams give them one year contracts. Guys come in and then the following season they'll disappear for whatever yeah. reason. Mm-hmm. And you can see clubs are getting steadily better prepared, you guys included, because you guys have strengthened the team rather than just plumped up the squad, is you know what I mean? But, but again, like I say, we'll cut it. So so mm-hmm. we'll, we'll rattle through last season. Um, oh, just before we, what was your expectations last season? Considering you were coming up as champion, it was it was top six for sure, and some good performances mm-hmm. in the cup. Uh, right. So so we surpassed that. I was really going to say, he ticked all boxes. Aye, aye. Aye. Yeah, uh, so I, yeah, I think he won over a few a few of his last year certainly. Right, so so the season kicked off in early July with the league cup, four wins before, none conceded. Peter Head, Cove Rangers, Stirling Albion and Inverness meant that the team qualified with ease and set up a tasty tie at Celtic Park versus Celtic. Before that, however, the league had kicked off with an equally tasty encounter at Tyne Castle. A 2-1 win for Hearts, Rock, Celtic, but set a standard for Hearts for the season, I think. Mm-hmm. Now, I appreciate it was a long time ago, but um, what was your feeling back then? Because uh, as I remember when speaking to you, you were cautiously optimistic about the team. Yeah, I think it, it was a good eleven that we had, you know. Mm. So I think if they all played, then we could we could give you know both both sides of the old farm a good run for the money on their day. Um, but I think I didn't expect us. To, I'll be honest, that first that game, I didn't expect us to win, and I was quite. We were hanging on, obviously, but mm. um, I was surprised, and and it did, as you say, kind of set a standard because I don't think a lot of us expected expected us to challenge like that right away I thought you know it's going to be the, the games against the likes of the Hibs, Aberdeen and all that we were really going to see what we're made of but to start like that it certainly gave the, the team a right right lift and a bit of belief for it and I think that carried on throughout the rest of the season Yeah, so after that, well, well, with that including that game, Hart set off an, an 11 match unbeaten league run and obviously that included the win over Celtic and a one-each draw with Champions Rangers at Ibrooks. 
So after the one each draw with St Johnson on the 27th of October, Hearts sat in third place, three points off top spot. <clears throat> As I brought up on the 13th of, on the 15th of August, should I say, Hearts travelled to Glasgow and were defeated 3-2 to go to the League Cup. Again, fair distance ago. To, how do you remember that game going? Because I've got my own memory of it, which kind of was the same all season, to be honest. But but what, what can you remember about that match? Well, I think um, the one thing I do remember about that day was that we were pleased that we actually went and, and had a go. I mean, mm-hmm. that's not something that we... That Nielsen, that's certainly been one of his criticisms, that when he goes to Glasgow, that's not something that we do very well. Um, we, send, we we tend to really not perform, so it was it was encouraging. I know there was a couple of, if I'm looking back, it was a, maybe a couple of dodgy, well, as you would say, refereeing decisions or offsides and things, but I, I don't think that really, you know, comes down to it. Well, now. It's so far away now, so... I well, think... my memory of that one is was very symptomatic of how Celtic were going under Ange at that point, that we could see this massive improvement However, what he was wanting was a hard shift. And mm. and as I remember, we kind of got up. We went 2 all up quickly and we looked like we were going to wipe the floor off his. Mm-hmm. But Hearts, as they did in every match against us, maybe maybe barring the last one, Hearts clung on and then got themselves right in the game. And you go back to 2-1. Um, obviously, you scored the late one, but we, we only scored that third. I think it was about the 70-odd minute or something mm-hmm. like that. And there was a kind of, at that point, I was kind of thinking, because that was even before the, the draws with Dundee and St. Johnston, you were sitting going, fucking hell, hearts are in this, man. Hearts are fucking looking. <laughs> Considering coming up for the championship, it was it was impressive because <clears throat> I, yeah. I like Robbie Nielsen in terms of C's arrogance and no giving a fuck. Mm. I don't like him. Because he obviously fucking hates selling. You can you can read that in his eyes, you know what I mean? But I do like his asshole attitude, do you know what I mean? I I appreciate that. And I like it in Scotland, do you know what I mean? And Aye. so 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 He's passionate for sure. Def, definitely but that's what we need, don't we? We need mm-hmm. guys who are passionate for their teams, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, no, totally. I like that about him. I mean he always seems to have been whether it doesn't matter who you're playing, he's he's gets He'll get booked. He'll get sent to the stand. He'll get really, really, really animated. Even if it's like a one-all draw with, with, with Ross County, for example. Do you know what I mean? He's still, it's, it's whoever it is. He gets really, he's really into it. And I think that's what a lot of fans when you go to a game. That's what you want to see, isn't it? You want to see that 100%. from the side as well. You don't want to see 100%. these managers who just stand with their arms folded, looking uh, nice. Do you know what I mean? That's all they do. I, I, did, I, remember, suit or whatever, I, so. uh, I remember a game Celtic played Rangers. At Celtic Park and Gordon Stack was the manager and Walter Smith was their manager. And don't get me wrong, I didn't really want them beating each other, but the game finished nothing each, and the two managers were standing side by side talking to each other. And I was like, fuck this. Right, so so the rest of the season was pretty much it was inconsistent, I think. However, you were still strong enough to stay in front of the chasing back for the rest of the season. Uh-huh. In early December, Celtic won the next league match between the sides. Uh, 1-0 at Celtic Park again. This time, a controversial goal for Kyogo enough to take the points. Right. This is the this is the offside one, maybe you were kind of talking about a minute ago. That, yeah. So, um, obviously that one stung, but again, a fucking tough, tough game between the teams. Eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, again, it was although... For it to come down to that is kind of Clear again, state. it's a positive, it's encouraging, it's frustrating, but it's also encouraging in a way that it was just the one right. goal. You've got that to talk about, do you know what I mean? Rather than it being the times we've gone before to Celtic Park, we've lost four now, we've lost five now, yeah. do you know what I mean? So, like, for us coming back up and seeing this go to Glasgow and compete is um, is all you want. Is all is mm-hmm. all we wanted for that for our first our first time back up. Yeah, yeah. So then that that game that. I forgot to record. We met again this time at Tyne Castle, and Celtic won two one in reverse of the first game. Uh, stunning Hatati strike was followed up with the Jackie Marcus goal, gave us a two 0 lead at the break. Looking mm-hmm. again, looking wildly, we were so far away. And then the second half, don't know if Robbie Nielsen started kicking some asses, but Liam Boyce scores a goal, and then. 
But that kind of overshadowed by the fact he missed the penalty at, yeah. a, point, at a point where Hearts were point. totally dominating, totally dominating. It was a massive point, uh, three points for us. Mm-hmm. And I kind of think it, it, set the, it set the rest of the season for Hearts at that point because you kind of got yourself in that comfortable third of position. You go to Scottish Cup sitting there, you might as well, like you said, you know what I mean? Uh, go for it. Yeah, I mean, that. I think that's... We were notorious for that last season. It was that we were slow to start games. So we'd be given ourselves a, a mountain to climb, but when we came back in, it, you would see in the second half the team in the way they could play, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was it was really frustrating to see because that happened to us against Rangers, I think, as well, where we went like two 0 down and then battled so back. So did and battered them, battered and, them. I back. and and felt like really unfortunate to not come away with something from that game. And it, it was the same. It was the same with that return at, at Ten Castle against yourselves. Um, really got really gotten for us, but I mean, just one of those things. But that's starting to change. With us starting to to start games a lot better, which is good see, to see. see. See, to be honest with that, it's something again. Going back to the Robbie Nielsen thing, I've always liked that you can trust that your manager is going to change things or get a reaction from people at half time. It's not a case. I mean. It's I, I I don't like Wayne. I know Neil Lennon the way a lot of Celtic fans do, but. It got to the point under Neil Lennon, you were stinking in the first half, and the second half just carried on the same way until the fucking 80th minute where we made three subs. Do you know what I mean? Like, see that? That's fucking frustrating. I lost you there, Scott. What was that? What did you say there? No, I love. Sorry. Like, based on, based on, I'm just saying with Robbie Nielsen at half time, it must be good to know that he can change things up. He can get the Aye, reaction yeah. after him. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so like. Hearts finished the league in third place. 17 wins, 10 draws, 11 losses from the 38 matches. 54 goals scored, 44 conceded, which is quite a lot, to be honest. Mm. Um, 61 points on board, 13 points ahead of Dundee United in fourth. 28 points off Rangers, who finished in second. This meant that Hearts qualified for the Europa League playoff round, guaranteeing group football of some description this season. Now, uh, excuse me. The aforementioned Scottish Cup, early wins over Oaken Lake Talbot, 5 0, followed by a tricky home tie with Livingston, who were edged out 4 3 in pens after a 0 0 stalemate. A good 4 2 win over St Mern put Hearts in the semis with rival Hibs. Now, not unlike the league season, Hearts are the better of your neighbours, winning 2 1 on the day to get yourself to the final. That must have been sweet. That was a great day. <laughs> <laughs> what I remember of it anyway, it was brilliant. <laughs> I remember being there, just we went two quick goals, and I thought oh, we we're gonna we we're gonna thump them. But again, we just we let them back in it a wee bit. But it, they still, although they got that early goal, still felt like we were going to see it out, and, and and we did, and it was brilliant to get another cup final for us. And we, we've had a few in the last few yeah. years, so it's been it's, it was good. It's just it was a really really good day that one. Always like they've never beaten us um, at a neutral venue, Hibs. You know, like yeah, I, in a cup, I, never, I, never. Jeez. Jeez, yeah, it's nice to have I'll that. Bring I'll bring that up with Mark. I'm gonna do that. Um, right, so you've just talked about the high. Let's talk about the low, right? So despite a decent defensive showing, the game went extra time, and after zero zero final score, I would call it a capitulation in extra time. I mean, Ryan Jacks is, is, is a it's a it's a it's a good strike, but. Gordon's got to save that, and you know, I mean, this is uh, it was... the, the standards that he's got. Mm-hmm. That that must have been a sober one, but yet again, I was there. I, yeah. I it was really frustrating because I don't know if you watched the match, but the ninety minutes, uh, I thought Rangers, as I expected, looked tired, mm-hmm. looked slow, but we just gave them so much time on the ball, and I just couldn't understand it. I was like, we're standing off them, letting them have this time, letting them catch their breath. I just wanted us to get in their face from the beginning, mm-hmm. try and get an early goal. We just looked like we were always just trying to hold for for pens and it was just so frustrating I know we had the kind of we had an early chance with Sims but other mm. than that we, we didn't do anything and it was just so frustrating as a, as a fan because you're that's a that was there was a lot of criticism for Nielsen that day because we just felt we right. didn't go for it you know it's one off mm. game and and I think they were there you know they were knackered they just had the, the horrible Thursday night so you, you, it was a really good opportunity for us and we just didn't take so I rem- got what I they deserved it. in my opinion I did watch it and Everything you've just said is where I was. I was kind of going. Uh, we had a discussion on your main show about you guys and we were talking, even if we'd beat Rangers, 
I was concerned about Hearts, like because the games you gave us that season, as I say, apart from the last one, he's in the face and he's made everyone a contest. Every game is a contest. And I was like, mm. Hearts look hungry as hell. I think Rangers might be on the problems here. And mm. then to see Hearts play the way they did. And as you said, Rangers did look leggy. I mean, their subs yeah. won the game for them. Do you know what I mean? That's, I totally, yeah, absolutely. Um, so so for, for me, it'd be frustrated just seeing them win it. Must have been doubly frustrating for yourself. Oh, absolutely. No, it was terrible. Terrible because it was a real I thought it was a real chance that day with a real opportunity to actually go away and go and win the cup. So it was grab it. Yeah. Frustrating. Um right, so so it's interesting you touch on that there. I, I dare say there wouldn't have been a ground swell of opinion, but would there have been murmurings about Nielsen kind of going right, well he's took us to this point. Is there an upgrade or or was it basically a that's frustrating, you made an RC it? Going day better. Aye, I think it was. I think it was that the latter. I think it was more mm-hmm. like, yeah, you've you've annoyed us here, um, but like, go again because we've done. We've had a good season. You've got mm-hmm. us to Europe, cup final again, a cup final again for him. You yeah. know, in, in a few years. So, um, I think it'd be only fair that you get another crack at it, another window mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so, so thoughts over a piece. Happy enough. I mean. It's a, it's a it's a very disappointing way to end the season, but coming up as champions <clears> to get yourself back to Hamden twice, beating your neighbours at Hamden, yeah. and and totally dominating the league within the league, if, if that makes sense. Do you uh, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, no, it was a really pleasing season for us for first one back, definitely. See, see, I mean, you you've probably you've heard the way I'm talking about Hearts. I done, I spoke to the Aberdeen boys just a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Totally dismissive of Hearts achievements. Totally oh, really? dismissive. Oh, I could, but because I was like, every game against us was hard, and it was, and everyone felt like it was a, oh yes, because Tin Castle has been a fucking bad place for us in the past, mm. and to come out of there with wins, not brilliant. And I said this to the Aberdeen boys, they're going, no, Hearts weren't that good. I'm going, but I think they had the better use over the season, eh? Aberdeen for some reason. Aye, uh, yeah, no, I think we had a, a few draws in, uh, and they got a, a couple of wins up in Potaudry as well. We didn't, we didn't travel well up there. Um, but, I mean, it, it didn't matter at the end of the day, did it, really? Aye, for a team finishing seventh, telling you the third place was rotten. Aye, go. sorry, I mean, I'm looking forward to my European trips, so I can't <laughs> have <that point. laughs> Good man, good man, that's what I like to hear. Right, so this season, so after last season's successes, like I suggested earlier on, I from looking at your signings and, and the guys who have left, it looks like a tidying up of the squad rather than fucking a rebirth. Or, uh, know what I mean, so yeah. so we'll go through the guys that left. So John Shooter, who had already signed a pre-contract with Rangers, left at the end of the contract. French midfielder Loic Damour left in a free transfer after spending last season in loan at Le Mans. He has since signed for Versailles. Uh, long-term uh, Jambo Jamie Walker, who had been alone in Bradford since January, he signed up full-time after his contract finished. Mahai Popescu, another who had been in loan the previous season with Hamilton Aki, he's left again at the end of his contract. And he joined Fanul Costanta in his hometown of Romania. So Irish midfielder Aaron Makanoff left to join Perth Glory for an undisclosed fee after turning out 22 times last season, scoring three goals, whilst young midfielder Scott McGill joined Kelty Hearts on a season loan. So like I say, Aaron Makanoff's the only guy who's kind of leaving. John Suter, obviously. No, I mean, yeah. not much in there with that. Aaron yeah. Makanoff seems like a guy who was part of the squad. I don't know, just a, a decent player. Aye, good, good player. The, the, the good turn for us when he came on. Sometimes a lot, I think there's a few of us maybe felt he didn't get enough opportunities, but um, mm. happy to see him go and, and maybe do, you know do well wherever he, wherever he moves on to. You know, right. So, in comments, Alan Forrest, after an, a, a really impressive spell with Livingston, joined on his own pre-contract agreement. Kyle Rolls, a 24-year-old centre half, joined from Central Coast Mariners. Um, and two th- as, of, as of 2022 rules is a full Australian international after turning out for all the youth teams Lewis Nielsen a, tw- a 19 year old fullback was picked up from Dundee United signing a three year deal Nielsen has played for Scotland at under 16 at under 17 level Alec Cochran the English fullback who'd been alone in the club last season was signed full time from Brighton after an impressive season last season 
27-year-old English midfielder George Grant was signed from Peterborough United. And finally, former Air United scoring sensation Lawrence Shankland was signed from Beershaw in July. He turned it 27 times for the Belgian side last season, scoring five goals. And I would say quite a coup for the club. Now, a sign for Nielsen, uh, who was picked up in a free, all the signing fees were undisclosed. So you saw each of them. There's a few of them you already know. Mm -hmm. Any any, um, uncut gems you've grabbed there then? I would say uh, Kai Rose, the centre half we brought in, Mm -hmm. uh, looks, I don't think he'll be with us for very long, put it that way. I I watched him yesterday, uh, I watched him done the United game, and uh, he just kind of strolled it beside um, beside Halkett. He seems to, he's obviously a replacement for Suter, Mm -hmm. and it, 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 it's nice to say for a change that you don't miss, you don't miss him, you don't miss Suter in our in our side now. This guy's an intelligent that's quite, that's defender. That's quite a thing to say, isn't it? Aye, but he is. He's, he's an intelligent defender and um, a really really good signing. Uh, really really pleased. I imagine that's the Australian connection seems to have worked for us recently. We've got this that young Cammy Devlin in the middle as well. He's a really yeah. really hard working player. Um, Oh, you call him hard working, I call him dirty. <laughs> <laughs> a few other names for him, I'm sure. Um, I, I think I think uh, Kai, Kai Rose is is going to be a, a really good player for us this season if we keep keep him fit. Mm-hmm. And um, Lewis, I think Nielsen will be one for the future. Right. I think you'll maybe turn out for the B team quite a bit this season. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously Shankland, I think I'm really delighted to get him. We've been missing that kind of player up top, Boyce. Gives you something else, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. He can, can bring people in, doesn't get as, as many of the goals. But Shankland only get. I was a bit worried because obviously his re- return last season for goals wasn't great. But I mean, he's already stepped up with two for us this this season and looks hungry, look two, really two hungry for. Yeah. So, the Hibs one, Hibs one's an outstanding goal. Aye. Even if, I mean, maybe, I can see the debate with it. Aye. Maybe, maybe, but but still to bring it down and finish with there. But we'll, we'll come to that. Aye. So. Apart from these guys who have just spoke about squad-wise, how do you see it? How are you looking with it? Right. So I've picked out my usual guys, right? Mm-hmm. Big Scotty Ignant here. So Craig Gordon, obviously, still an impressive, important player. Um, I think we spoke about four. I like Liam Boyce. Right? I get mm-hmm. what you're saying. Liam Boyce isn't he a, a, a finisher like, who's going to return you 25 every season. Yeah. But for the work rate he does and... He's so strong. I mean, he just brings guys in and the ball contains them. And yeah. I like the fact he'll just work all day for the team. Yeah. Um, and he always always gives us a lot of hassle. Um, Barry Mackay looks unbelievable to know. And maybe maybe he's living up to the, that early hype. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so so who, who else do you see in the squad that, aye, ah, these are big players for us this season. You, you spoke about Gammy Devlin. Maybe kind of halk it himself and that, but, mm. but but what I'm seeing where you've got Shanklin and Mackay look look like genuine top notchers right now. Yeah, I think the, like with Mackay down that left side, you've got behind him Stephen Kingsley when he's fit again. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a really top player for us, especially from like set set plays. His delivery is great, and if we get, <clears throat> he's he's scored a fair few free kicks for us as well right. over the time. So. I think Stephen Kingsley is a really key player for us because that's a position we've struggled with for years up the left side, the left back. But since he's came in, he's really kind of been just first one of the first names on the team sheet when he's fit. So I would say Kingsley will be a key player. Um, um, who else? Uh, Mackay. Mackay looks better than he did last year already. His movement and he's getting more confidence about him. And I would also say like from new signings that I think could be key, I think Forrest will be big for us as well. He's another one like coming in off the right. That we've just we've not had these kind of players on both sides uh, for for years. These kind of guys you trust to kind of come in and have a go. A lot of the time is watching Hearts for the last couple of seasons. There's a lot of just passing it from side to side and nobody having a having a shot. It's so frustrating to watch. Mm-hmm. But we don't have that now. Like Mackay cut in and shot and scored uh, on Sunday. So mm-hmm. it's it's just nice to have the, to have these these players that have got that confidence. Um, so I think that's where it will be dangerous. Is, is, is wing is down the wing for a change. Any, any young guys coming into the squad that you kind of think uh, in a couple of year time we're looking at a, a standout? Because Hearts have brought through a, a good few in recently, haven't they? Yeah, I would say um, Finley Pollock through the through the middle, the young midfielder that's coming through that looks promising, and actually young goalkeeper Harry Stone. 
I think will be one for the future as well. Hopefully, with Gordon's got another maybe season or two in him. Mm-hmm. But I would say that this young guy Stone is is uh, has been doing really well wherever he's gone on loan, right. and um, I think he could be he'd be a big name for us if we manage to hold on to him because uh, I think there's some interest in him even just now. But right, okay. if we hold on to him over the next couple of years, I think he would be the next first choice keeper for us. I suppose we need, we need to do that. You know, I mean, obviously we try and get big big names in signing. Like people like Shankland is great, but I think we still need to really use the academy to bring guys through. At a point now where Scottish football has got more eyes on it for a long, long time, with with the Italian clubs signing up players and the English clubs looking to come and get our young guys. So getting these guys, getting these guys football, and then sad to say we're on the same boat at different levels, aren't we? We're mm. going to fucking get guys in and sell them. I mean, look. Yep. Look, look at Aberdeen getting fucking, what did they get, four million for, for Ramsey and stuff like that. That's what we all need to be doing. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. every, every, everybody in Scotland, yep. <laughs> however, however big or little we think we are, everyone is, I've got to do it. Yep. Right, so on to this season. Um, no league group for you guys this season, too. So <laughs> uh, uh, a shitload of friendlies, I noticed you played. Um, I mean, look, looking, looking at the results there, you've kind of... Stoke City one sticks out right for the off, but, but generally, generally it's been pretty good. So mm-hmm. we'll go right on to the league then, right? So again, I've I always say this: I watch the highlights that the SPFL give us, and and I watched a fair bit of the the Derby in fairness. But mm-hmm. so when I say here, I'm kind of needing you to kind of correct me if I'm no yeah. from the Ross County game, right? So I watched the Ross County game, and it looked like Ross County battered you for the first half. <laughs> True, they did. Uh, they absolutely then, did. And then the second half, eh, I'd, I'd, the word, the class was shown in the second half, wasn't it? Because, I mean, the two goals, however bad Ross County might think the second goal is, the first goal is a belter, an absolute crack. You know what I mean? Yeah, aye, absolutely. I think um, <clears throat> you're right, that's the thing I was going back to earlier, I was saying Hearts, mm-hmm. notorious for slow, slowly starting into games, and uh, that, was, that was true at the start of the season. I don't know why, but um, like County could have thoroughly deserved to come away with a win that day. Um, a post in the bar early doors, didn't it? Aye, exactly. It looks like they've actually recruited pretty well. A couple of good, tidy young players. Um, but but uh, yeah, we, we came back second half and um, showed a bit of class and, and managed to get the win. But I think these are the kind of games that if we really want to be serious about pushing on, how do you push on? Do you know what I mean? But like... Getting closing the gap even more. I feel like we need to be winning these games. You know, these games where they're tight and we could. You know, other other times we'd have drawn or lost those matches. So the mm-hmm. fact that even though mm-hmm. we were under the course for a bit, to still come through and win it was was quite was quite good, quite big. Yeah. So yeah. Please. And then, and then you're, you're straight into the derby after that disappointing day at the office. I would say. Yeah. From from what I looked at it, and it, it, even going by the stats, and as I remember the game, they had a, they had a couple of decent headers they should have done better with and stuff like that. However, you're 1-0 up and you've got a couple of great chances in that second half. That mm. game should be dead and buried, shouldn't it, really? Aye, you I think... You should, uh, get the second, the game's done. I think, I really do. I think uh, we should have been really pushing for that second goal and it just, it, it didn't come. And I, I, I could just see it, the writing on the wall, especially when Boyle <laughs> came on. I just knew this was how it was going to go. Just painful for it to be the last kick of the game. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think to be honest, over the the ninety minutes, probably a fair result, a draw. Mm-hmm. But yeah. from a Hearts fan's point of view, yeah, you just want to get that second goal because we would have, it would have been enough, I think. It's, it's kept, it was kept, similar in a way like our semi final against Rangers last year, in terms of Rangers in the second half were the better team, but Celtic get that second, the game's finished. Aye, exactly. Man, exactly. You've got to fight. do it when, when you're on top. You have to get. We'll them. Take you have him. To get the and that, but that's what that's. As you see, you've just brought Shankland's just in the door, and like I say, the two goals he scored are two. I mean, the, the one against Dundee United, that's a striker finish. That's probably Aye. that's exactly yeah. what you want. Absolutely. So come on, we'll come on to that night. So yesterday afternoon, uh, that was Sunday there. Dundee United woes continues as Hull strolled out to a four-one win on the day. Um, mm. ah, easy peasy. Yeah, <laughs> and that was like that's what we want to see is that especially at Towncast fast start like that okay mm-hmm. <laughs> he's not going to get a goal inside a minute every time but a fast start like that just to get in a, get in the visiting team's faces and just create chances um, but aye the, the first goal was a good 
a great one. It's Dev, I think Devlin whips it in and it's just a nice touch, nice finish. Um I it was it was a pretty straightforward day at the office. I don't think it was a penalty for United. I don't know if you've seen it, but I didn't see much contact in it. But I think it didn't, it didn't matter anyway. It didn't matter anyway. So it, it, I mean, still don't want Fletcher storming up Buckingham Stick Man. No, <laughs> never. But, <laughs> um, stupid haircut. <laughs> but it was still it was a a, a good win because I, I I still think United could have been one of our kind of closest challengers along with maybe Aberdeen this season. So I thought it was a good a good result for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, what you've done there though, you've You've helped your own confidence, especially kind of get knocked after the the Hibs game where you've mm-hmm. kind of think, fuck, that's frustrating. But let's be honest with you, Dundee United were a rattled team and you had to take your opportunity there, didn't uh-huh. you? You were at yeah. home. They were, they, their confidence must have been shot after the midweek stuff mm-hmm. and you went and done what you shouldn't be doing. And that, that must give you a hell of a lot of hope for the season. Aye, definitely, because mm-hmm. it really, it, it's just, I seen that response and seeing like, as you say, knowing that if they go and have a go at this team or the confidence is down, they're going to get a result. There's so many times we've seen them, like I was saying about the cup final last season, we didn't do that. We didn't take those yeah. chances. Yeah. Um, but it was just nice to see Hearts play the way that we know they can. Uh, they maybe have, they maybe didn't do a lot in the county game. And certainly for long spells in the, in the derby, they didn't do that either. But they were pretty consistent over the 90 minutes on Sunday um, and controlled controlled the game uh uh, and, and looked good, looked good for the win, and I deserved the four goals. I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I have just had to check here. So you've got Kilmarnock in the cup on thirty first. You've got them in the league cup at home. Mm-hmm. From from looking at your highlights and, and watching Kilmarnock yesterday, and I, I I don't even think Kilmarnock were particularly bad. I thought Celtic were impressive, but Kilmarnock. I mean, I don't know if you've clocked them this season. I think every player's over six foot. They're fucking giant. Big side, yeah. Giant. They brought two guys off the bench yesterday. I don't remember. Me. I was like, what kind of size are you two guys? <laughs> I mean, they're not any that size. So, yeah. so I think any time you play them, you're in for a battle. But I would, I would suppose that you are. You would come through that unscathed, to be honest. Um, right. So, so just in general, from the games, I mean, how's it look? Like, like I said, my notes basically say that Mackay. And Shanklin looked terrific. Alan Forrest looks excellent. Looks like a great addition. Mm-hmm. Looks like you've got a fair bit of pace on the counter, especially in the Dundee United game. You were punishing them every time, and you mm-hmm. looked dangerous on the counter. So I mean, I don't know if that's if, would that have been something that Nielsen had last season, or is this something you've kind of just built on going back to the fact that you said you've got these two wide guys. Yeah, I think it's I think it's maybe built on it. We didn't always do it last season. You know, we'd get into these situations where I think a lot of the time you would see Gordon like a lot of the, we'd be wanting them to break, and they, and they wouldn't. I don't know if they just didn't have that belief or or, or um and maybe the the players to do mm-hmm. it. But yeah, Mackay's got a lot more confidence than when he first joined us. Okay, he had a lot of assists and things, but he's, he seems like a much even better now. Um, Cochrane coming in and getting him signed up is, is a really good addition because he's he just bombs up and down the, the, the pitch all game yeah. and gives you gives you that outlet. Gordon was looking for them all the time yesterday and that's how we got the third goal. We just kind of, he got it and we just launched it up the park and we just kind of went for the counter and and, and made them pay. But yeah, it's been really really pleasing to see. Um, that is how we're going to play. I think I think especially in Europe and probably when we meet ourselves on Sunday, we'll be looking for those moments to try and counter. Well, the, because that G- pace is there. Janelli coming off events is also a part of that as well. He he seems mm. to cause us no end of fucking problems. I was at, I, on one hand, I was delighted you'd never got the boy Sims, but on the other side, I think because I like, I mean, am I right in thinking he made his debut in that two-one game for you guys? Did you? Because I'm Sims. pretty sure you, you brought him off the bench, and he was, and I was like, Fuck yeah. This. That's boys dynamite. That's boys ah, you're class. right. He did. Yeah, uh, yeah, he did. He was. Uh, he was a good player. We all really wanted. We all wanted him to stay, but I think it was just. I don't think we could sort he's of wages chat, he's out for him, and he's gone. Aye, he's gone where I think he'll do very well. Um, mm. and we'll probably hear a lot about him in the next couple of years because he right. looks like Smashing, a good player. Smashing big player, right? Mm. Right, okay. So before we jump on to Sunday, you guys have got the small matter of a Europa League playoff in this week. Right. With Swiss champion Zurich at the Let- Letters Grund in Zurich itself, a 26k stadium. 
noticeable I noticed for the big large running track around the pitch. So how are you feeling with the tie? Um, they've already failed from the the Champions League qualifiers. They lost mm. to Carabag, but then they since battered Linfield quite easily. Yeah. League wise, they are totally struggling. I noticed they've got three losses and two draws from the mm-hmm. first five games. So yeah, we better hope, aren't you? I've got to believe, I think, don't you? You've got to go out there and, and I think the most important thing on Thursday is to go out and come back with something, come back to yeah. Tynecastle with something that we can, like, the fans can be right up for it and can mm-hmm. just want to still be in the tie. I mean, it almost worries me that the players would think that, OK, well, if we don't do well in this tie, we've still got the, the conference. Yeah, so I still yeah, want, yeah, yeah. Want, the, want the Europa League group stages because it would just be... Some, it's for the Amazing. for the big ties we could get, you know. Uh, so yeah, I think they've got to go and believe. I'm not actually. I'm actually working on uh, uh, BBC for BBC Alba on Thursday night, so I'll only get to see the first half. Um, is, but, it, is, uh, it on, is it on your tele or is it on BT? Is I, it? It's on BBC Scotland, I think. Probably, probably. Aye, so it will be on. But I've got my tickets for the first leg. Win. So. I want you to win, but I'm no saying good luck to you because I've done that to Dundee United and look what happened today. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. But see, see, it's interesting you're talking about the groups and obviously you guys, if you're in the Conference League, I'm sure you'll be delighted as well because you're, well, right, you're going to these European nights and stuff like the Castle and stuff. But um, see, like, obviously I watched for years Celtic getting put out of the qualifiers and then they're happening into tournaments. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, you're happy enough that you're going into a tournament but even last year, we could put the Champions League, but then we beat Alkma. And see, even just having that sense of achievement that we qualified for this rather than we fell into this, yeah. it is a buzz. And, and, and I can see where you're coming from. I mean, I really hope he's won. I hope he's get through big time. Um, and I think it'd be great for the club and great for Scotland and stuff like that. So oh, yeah. I really hope so, mate. Right, so on a Sunday. Versus Ross County, Nielsen lined up a 4-3-3. Four, a 3-4-3, should I say. But in the last two games, you're reverted to a 4-2-3-1 against both Hibs and Dundee United matches. So how do you expect the Jambos to line up in this game? How do you think Nielsen will set the team up? And then what's your kind of hope for the game? I think it'll be the same as it's been the last two games. I think it'll be 4-2-3-1. Um... And I'll be looking to counter. That's mm-hmm. what I imagine. Uh, I don't know. I, it's really tough to try and call who's going to be in the squad, but because right. this tie on Sunday falls in between this Europa League qualifier, so it's a really hundred percent crazy conundrum, if you know what I mean. Because obviously, I want to go to Celtic Park and have a right go and, and try and take something away from the game. But I think if I was, it, it's mental, but. I, if I'm prioritising anything right now, I'm prioritising the two games either side with with with, with who's starting and who I'm trying to keep fit. Do you know what I mean? Um, so do, do, do you think that we're this early in the season and he's he's really having? I mean, you're the same as us. You've only played the league games. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I mean, let's be honest about it. These are professionals. They should be able to fucking day off. Recently. They should be. They should <laughs> be. I no. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Um, I mean, I would hope that. You'll have we'll have Shankland up top for sure. Uh, he's just like there's nobody getting in in front of him there. I think Boyce pro- would play in behind and try and bring mm-hmm. bring him into the game. I think it, you might get one. Or, I'm thinking of Sunday here. It'd be maybe one of uh, Mackay or Forrest. Right. Uh, I don't I don't know if both will play because he would, he tried it on Sunday and it didn't quite work. He kept swapping. They kept swapping sides and Forrest eventually came off. So I think it might go with. with I think it'll probably be Mackay. I would see starting on Sunday over over Forrest, who I think we will come on. Um, if Kingsley's fit, he goes in at left back for me, uh, and then you've got. Do you want actually? Do you want, so I'll I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll I'll run through my my team again if you like. Right. Do you want Perfect. that? Let's start Perfect. again. Right. So I'll go for. This is what I'll go for because I'm just I'm actually I'm writing it down now because as I see it. Uh, Right, so my my team for Sunday would be Gordon, mm-hmm. Kingsley on the left, Rolls, Halkett, Smith as the four. And then in the middle, I would have Haring and Grant, along with Mackay out wide. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Forrest on the right actually. Right, you're going I'm, for 
Yeah, I'm going for it. And Boyce, I think if guys are all fit, Boyce, and then I'd have obviously Shankland up top as well. And you're expecting a good counter attack for that, but hard that there's you say, I mean, so what kind of players George Grant had another Hardy guy? Aye, aye, aye. he's stuck in. He looks at it, didn't he? A wee story. Yeah. <laughs> aye. Aye, but he's, aye, he's a good player, good player. I was impressed with him yeah, uh, on Sunday. Uh, that was the first time I'd seen him get a full 90 minutes. And yeah, he played, he played really well, or start, I should say. Right, OK, so the big one, give me a score. I'll be tight. <laughs> I think, for me, uh, it's all about limiting Celtic, stopping me scoring, because you're scoring for fun just now. Um, <laughs> So I'm hoping like, if we can, def- it would be defending first, trying to get on the counter, maybe a one each draw. I would take, I would take that in, be- in between these two European ties as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a draw, I would say a draw. All right, right. So as per my usual standard question, so after a game this weekend, what is your expectations of the season, and beyond that, what's your hopes for the season? Okay, uh, expectation is third again. I think we should be consolidating that this season, uh, respective of how far we go in Europe. Mm-hmm. I think we should still, there's no disrespect to the other teams, but I do think we should still be able to hold third um, with, with the players we have and the squad we have now, because we've added and recruited well to an already good kind of mm-hmm. 11, I would say. Um, so it's it's third. And what I really want to see is a trophy. I don't mind what trophy it is. I just, need, I just want some silverware. Uh, I always thought something about the Scottish Cup, so I'd love, I'd love us to try and try and lift that this season. That would be, that would be my my real dream. And to get another dream would be to get beyond Christmas in Europe in whatever capacity that is. If that ends up being the Conference League, but this is why qualifying for Europa League is so important because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. then we get that opportunity still again, if you like. So uh, yeah, yeah. We'll see, yeah, see how it goes. But that and, would be and, it. For me. And then the, the added kind of bonus is. You're in these groups, and as you see, this whole hope, it's a Europa League. He's getting the groups, you get the dough that comes with it, allows you to go and strengthen again next summer. You're not just fucking re-signing guys, and like, you're going to get improving the team, Building. consolidating that. that, and then you, and this hope that, this hope Rangers do all right in the Europa League as well. <laughs> and we can, um, we can, we can all kind of build the points up and keep, Keep getting into European competition because you boys get straight into a group stage, brilliant, absolutely yeah. brilliant. I remember last season when I was like, "That's good," because I mean, I was gutted the way it went down for Dundee United, but fuck, I'm gutted still... for them as well. To be honest, I really, I really wanted them to do it against against that. Well, it's a real shame. No, it's <laughs> funny, right? So, so doing this podcast, I get contacts for all different teams, <clears throat> yeah. and Dundee United, um, social media is very, very active, right? Very active. And see the Pelton League how you go if we're going to do it. I think Aberdeen fans, <laughs> Dundee fans, Hibs fans, Hearts fans, they were getting ripped in them. Like Sailor Raiders fans on the same end. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just the Aberdeen fans going, oh, hope you're laughing. I was like, there you go. Eh? <laughs> go, go on, his team. Oh, right, like, um, aye, that's funny. Brilliant, Nicky. Right, thank you very much for taking your time out and doing this and, and putting your ironing board away for me. That was nice. Aye, the ball, Th- Scott, aye. Thanks for that, pal. <laughs> Just be- before we go, anything you want to tell the world, anything you want to kind of sell, where are you in social media? Uh, social media is just it's Twitter that I'm using. It's just uh, at Nick underscore Walker. Um, it's just usually just tweet about you kind know, of what I'm working on, which is kind of BBC Alba stuff. So yeah, can I support? Support Scottish football, but support women's football as well because it's growing. So let's just kind of keep that following going. I mean, Celtic are going for strength to strength, two cups last season. So you know, like, let's just get the eyes on on all all parts of the game. Brilliant, mate! Absolutely brilliant. Well, once again, thank you very much. As I always say, hope your season goes great after Sunday, <laughs> and um, all the fucking very best in Europe, mate. And I, I hope you get, I hope you get a couple of dinger trips that takes you. Takes you a couple of them, mate. Fingers crossed, I'll be going for sure. Yeah. Good man, good man. Well, once again, Paul, thank you very much. Uh, cheers, Scott. Thanks a lot. See you later on.